I was staring at my computer on Thursday night at nine o'clock thinking, I just have to do these few more tasks. I just have to do these few more emails. And I literally physically couldn't do it anymore. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you're listening to Resilient by Design. Today is a shorty episode, and I just wanted to hop on here to talk about burnout. I recently experienced a major burnout, and it has been a really long time since I've experienced. In fact, I think it was probably reminiscent of either 2016, 2017. It really got me to do some introspective thinking. Anyhow, today I want to just quickly share with you, why do we burn out? What is causing this burnout and how can we fix it? And this is the journey that I'm on. So here we go. Burnout is when you literally burn out. It's like you're burning the candle from both ends. You don't even probably realize you're doing it. You're probably someone who values hard work, productivity, and you're trying to do it all. You're trying to wear all the hats. Maybe you're a mom, maybe you're a business owner, you're a designer, you're trying to please your clients, you're trying to get your systems in place, you're trying to take all the courses, you're trying to meet your friends for drinks, you're trying to do all the things. And typically for me, what happens is I tend to experience burnout when I'm getting close to something big, like maybe a big reveal for for a client or a presentation in the past. Or in this case, it was just, well, I can tell you specifically what happened to me. It was like, I was trying to take vacation over the summer months, kind of putting a lot of things on the back burner and trusting my team. And they did a great job, but there were certain things that no one else could do. Only I could do them. So I kept pushing them into September. And then I got back after being on holiday and I had four days to do the impossible It was an impossible amount of task, which was ensuring certain orders were placed, reviewing a million different items, needing to collect things to go to a job site. Like everything is coming to a head with my one design project. On the flip side with the coaching business, we're gearing up for our power of process launch at the time of my burnout. And so it was like, okay, Rebecca, you need to record these podcast ads. Have you recorded these shorty episodes? I need to get my many chat up and running, which is like the automated systems. I need to check in with the team. Where's the copy going? What's happening with our Facebook ads? Like everything happened to me. Plus we had the first time in nine years, really the only time I've ever started school without a nanny. We had let our nanny of nine years move on, though we're ready for it. It was a bit of a hard awakening in that all those tiny little things add up. And I was working so hard all day, cutting my workday short to pick up the kids, then get home, try and work at home, which I haven't done in years because I had so many deadlines and I was falling behind. And I was at a point where I was staring at the computer, getting nauseous. And in fact, I'm actually recording this shorty episode post burnout recovery. And I chose not to turn on the camera, even though I'm so sorry if you're on YouTube and you're used to watching me, I just needed a break from staring at a screen. And so by doing the audio only, I don't have to burn out my eyes. It got to the place where, you know, Thursday, Friday night of that short week, my eyeballs were literally bugging out of my head. Like I was staring at my computer on Thursday night at nine o'clock thinking, I just have to do these few more tasks. I just have to do these few more emails. And I literally physically couldn't do it anymore. And that is a point that I have not experienced in years. And so I wanted to share this episode because first of all, I'm not to complain and not looking for empathy at all, but I want us to dissect this. And how do we get to this place? Because I'm someone who talks about, look what I've done. I have a really great work schedule. I'm really great at time blocking. I've grown two businesses, you know, the first business to seven figures. And so for me, it was actually double whammy because I pride myself in being someone who has overcome this burnout cycle. And yet here I found myself again. And what I think is a really great element to talking about this out loud is just accepting that we're human and we're we're not going to always get it right. And perfection doesn't freaking exist. Honestly, there's a little bit of relief when you remind yourself of that. 
as I went through the week, I was getting more and more tired. We went, we went, you know, to a friend's on Friday night and I had maybe two drinks, like nothing crazy. And that night I got home and I was violently ill with the stomach flu and I was sick all weekend. I missed my husband's birthday, (laughs) which was on Saturday. Poor guy was doing the parenting. Thank goodness for our community of neighbors who helped parent and feed all the children and host a Christmas birthday party. But even as I record this is the Monday after, I'm still slightly feverish, not feeling great. And it has been a really great reminder that we cannot do it all. And when we get to that place, what we need to reflect on is where are we not taking care of ourselves? Because when we work really hard, and in my experience for me, when I get to a burnout phase, it's like my body is so desperate for rest, it's run down, it's tired, that it almost is like the universe telling me, it's my body telling me, hey, Rebecca, you haven't taken time for me, so I'm going to take it. (laughs) You haven't taken me to the spa, you haven't taken a day off, right? You haven't like done something that fills your cup. You know, being at the cottage with the kids is great, but you're still with the kids and you're still parenting and you're hosting people and it's not restful. So my body was telling me, yeah, you're going to be sick. So I'm going to force you to stay in bed for two days. There's something that we do to ourselves where it's like we almost wear being busy as a badge of honor. And I did think this is something that I've kind of moved past, but clearly I'm still working through this is this idea of like, look at me, I can achieve so much, but at what cost? And so if you're someone who has experienced burnout in the past, or maybe you're feeling it right now, like September, I love, but it's a lot, especially as a parent, the mental load of like, when does swimming start as ballet this weekend or next weekend? Oh yeah, don't forget he's got that dry land training. Oh, we were invited to so-and-so's birthday party. Do you think we can go to the cottage next weekend? Let me, like even just saying that out loud makes me tired. But you guys know that inner monologue that you go through as you're trying to coordinate and organize your life, especially as a woman and as the mom and sorry to the dads listening I know there are many dads who deal with that but I would say more often than not it's the moms I know who are managing that mental load and so that on top of work can feel like a lot and if we don't slow down or carve out the time to go to Pilates on Wednesday morning or get up early and go for that walk or say no thank you to the social engagement because you're tired. If we don't do those things to honor our bodies, our bodies are going to show us and they're going to knock us out and it's not going to be fun. I'm curious if you guys have experienced this, but I just wanted to put that out there. I don't think there's enough conversation around this. People tend to kind of breeze past, oh, I was sick. I'm fine. Let's get going again. I got energy. And then you kind of do the whole cycle all over. For me, I'm trying to be intentional now about this schedule. Like I came into work today. I'm like, hey, what is a priority? What can I do with the energy I have? Yep. Can I record a couple of these episodes without a camera? Done. Can I do a couple other things and then go home for a nap? I'm going to do that. I think it's something that I've learned a little later than I wish, but at least I'm learning it is pause, slow down. You can still achieve what you want without the overwork, without the burnout, This is your message to stop burning the candle at both ends. Find help where you can. And if you can't find the help, you need to reduce the workload and prioritize. What in your day is actually going to move the needle? Does it mean maybe ignoring your email inbox for a few hours? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. That's what I'm doing today. I'm sorry. I'm just just not going to go there because all it's going to do is take me down the overwhelm cycle. So all that to say, if you're experiencing burnout, you are not alone. We can do this together. We can prioritize ourselves together. You got this, mama. And I hope this was helpful. I'll see you soon. The Resilient by Design podcast is produced by Vera Marquez, edited by Abby Circatella, and hosted by yours truly, Rebecca Hay. Thank you.